Whoa! What do you guys think that is? <laughs> what What do you guys What do you think it is? What do you think's going on here? Should we play it one more time? Last time. Whoa! Hi guys, I just want to take a second to thank all my patrons here who have donated to me. No matter how much they've donated to me, it really means a lot to me. And if you guys want, you can check out my Patreon and help support me continue to make Yaoi videos. Thanks guys. His back slowly disappeared back into town. I thought about going back, 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 the same way, hiding at the orphanage, but everyone just saw me being marched through town like that. That could really use some rephrasing. That's too many backs. <laughs> I had no choice. I had to leave with only the clothes on my back. <laughs> the envelope from the matron, the book I had stolen accidentally from the speaker, and my regret. I, ca I ran... I ran like I had never... I never had before. It felt like my heart would burst out of my chest at any second, and my lungs burnt with every breath. Muscles I didn't even know I had ached. Even when I thought I couldn't go any further, I kept running. Where are we? Where is he running? Where Where is he going? <laughs> is it safe to just run wildly, blindly into the forest? When I finally collapsed, all I could see was trees and darkness in all directions. I was completely lost. Remember, remember the first or second or third buddy law? Like... <laughs> Like, remember that you need to, like, find a source of food first or something. Damn. Make shelter. What are you doing? <laughs> I laid down on my back and caught my breath. What can I do now? I've lost everything. Oh, well, better go for another, another extended jog. That'll solve everything. No home to go back to. No family. What would everyone at the orphanage think when they found out? Would they be disappointed? Angry? Will they just think I've abandoned them? Betrayed them? A million thoughts ran through my head all at once. I took a deep breath of fresh forest air, calm I took a deep breath of the fresh forest air and calmed my thoughts. It was only then when I realized the situation I was in. Here I was, sprawled out on the forest flo floor, alone at night. I suddenly picked up on all the things I hadn't noticed before. A scratching sound, bushes rustling, a howling from somewhere far in the distance. The wind picked up and whipped my hair around my face, only adding to the sudden terror that had struck my heart. All the stories I had been told since childhood about venturing outside of Aurelia Cavella came back to me, and I hadn't only heard of them, I would repeated the same ones to my children time and time again. Nobody left the confines of Aurelia Cavella. The forest was a dangerous place that spread to the far corners of the planet, and only the protection from the beings above had we lived had we lived in peace for so long. I strained my eyes, trying to look in the darkness that surrounded me. Finally, I dragged myself up from the forest floor. I pulled my coat tighter around myself for security, and nervously checked that I still had all my belongings before turning back the way I came. Maybe if I stay closer to the city lights, it'll scare away any danger. Can we even find our way back there? <laughs> we kind of ran for a while. It was this way, right? Or this way? You should have left a trail. That's another buddy law. <laughs> no matter which direction I turned to face, the trees looked the same. And from every angle, I could hear strange noises. Oh, come on. Which way? Which way? I whipped my head from left to right before dropping my head in my hands. I unconsciously let out a sigh. It's hopeless. Hello, full moon. It's hopeless. Why did I say that? <laughs> Once again, I was surrounded by the sounds of the forest and the feeling of the unknown. Who knew it would be this scary? An eerie feeling gripped my heart. I could feel eyes on me. Oh, hey, what's up, Caius? <laughs> Um, yeah, you missed, you missed Rain getting exiled. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a bitch. Suddenly, it was quiet. All I could hear was my own heartbeat, quickening by the second. I had to get out of here. With no sense of direction, I just ran. Ran until I couldn't run anymore. <sighs> 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 
No matter where I went, everything looked the same. The trees started to blend together in my eyes, becoming one entity. I collapsed onto the ground and crawled back until my body hit a tree. Just having something behind me made me feel more secure. I buried myself into its huge roots. I could barely see my hand in front of my face in the pitch black darkness. The night was freezing. I brought my knees up to my chest, hugging in tight to try and get some warmth. I felt the letter that I had hidden in my clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry. With the letter clutched close to my heart, I shut my eyes to try and escape from the dangers of reality. I know, I think, I think the backgrounds are really pretty too. Destined child. False prophecy. Speak. Awaken. <laughs> I awoke with a start. What was with that dream? I feel like that's not the first time, either. Everything felt kind of hazy, and I could barely recall what it was about. I uncurled my body from the forest floor and started to take notice of my surroundings. Rays of bright light shone between tree branches, bringing a slight warmth to my face. It felt nice after the cold wind from last night. The air felt crisp, which must be a sign it's still early. What? When I finally started looking around me, I noticed something strange. It was... it was just a sketch and not a finished CG. I was surrounded by beautiful flowers, the kinds I'd never seen before. When did these get here? It was so dark last night that I couldn't tell if they were here before. They could have been, but the formation is a little strange. I let out a sigh. Uh, what's with all of these strange things happening to me? The strange pain I got in the town square the other day, the dreams that I can only half remember, not to mention the markings on my arm. I raised my arm up to the sky, inspecting it closely in the light. I traced the symbols lightly with my fingertips. It's definitely the same symbols from the book I brought with me. What is it trying to tell me? I absentmindedly played with the flowers that surrounded me, whilst recalling the events of yesterday. I need to find someone that can read these markings. There's no way I'll be able to sneak back into Aurelia Cavella. <laughs> yeah, if, if you missed my explanation before, this is if this is just a beta demo, so these CGs aren't not all of them are finished, so you know, <laughs> be aware of that. I pulled the book out and looked through some of the other pages. I could read the majority, but they looked relatively unimportant. It was mostly just charts and lists. The big ones were the king's bloodline, and the one in the unknown language that matched my markings. Everyone knows the monarchy unexpectedly ended around 20 years ago, but the reasons why weren't widely known or disclosed. I looked over the names again. King Shi Shion of Sid Kaiham. What is this Sid Kaiham? Why does the bloodline only start 300 years ago? And then Prince Caspian, 37 years ago. Was this his birth date? The date he was crowned? He could still be alive. He might be able to tell me what this marking means. If only I knew where he was. Uh -huh. <laughs> Was that his stomach? <laughs> I suddenly realized how hungry I was. I guess the last time I ate any food was yesterday. I tried to swallow, but my throat felt all dry and scratchy. I'm seriously thirsty. I searched my pockets, but I didn't have anything to eat with me. Finally, I got up and stretched my shoulders out. I'd... I'd give anything... Do you guys hear my cat? Oh my god. I'd give anything to sleep on a bed instead of the ground again. First task today, find water. Easier said than done, of course. I glanced at the trees around me, but I had no clue which... which way I came from last night. I'll just have to pick a direction and hope for the best. I brushed the dirt off my clothes and started my hike to find water. The sun was high, out high above me now, warming my chilled body and calming my mind. 
Compared to last night, the forest wasn't even half as terrifying. Sunlight filtered through the green leaves above, leaving interesting patterns all over the ground. She is being an attention whore, actually. She actually is. She that's she's literally just eating right next to me right now. And like she is an attention whore. <laughs> Moss grew out over the moist tree trunks and roots, making everything look fuzzy and warm. I could hear the faint tweeting of birds up in the canopy. Instead of scary, it was actually kind of beautiful. The only sounds I could hear was my own breathing, and twigs break- <laughs> And twigs- I'm sorry about that- And twigs breaking under my boots. It was peaceful, even serene when the sun was up. Without noticing, I was slowing my pace, taking in the scenery and enjoying the atmosphere. Everything happened last night. Everything that happened last night felt like a dream. Wild flowers littered the ground where I was walking, so I tried to avoid stepping on them. I le leant down and picked and picked one to bring with me. Oh my God, no! I don't live in a barn. No, stop! You're gross, Lindsay. Don't you can't you can't talk about that here, Lindsay. Oh my God! <laughs> I kept walking at my own pace like this for a while before I was hit with a foul stench that quickly overpowered the fresh smell of the flower in my hand. It was kind of like an off meat mixed with something sickeningly sweet. I kept walking and it <laughs> kept getting stronger. What is that? In the distance, I could see some kind of cloth jutting out from under the bush. The closer I got, the more overpowering the smell was. It looked like some kind of knapsack. Could there be food in there? Water? Something I could, I could use out here? I tried to pull it out from under the bushes, but it must have been stuck in the branches. I grabbed on with both of my hands and gave it one big pull. Whoa! Huh? <laughs> what was that noise? Can we replay that? Whoa! Whoa! What do you guys think that is? <laughs> what What do you guys What do you think it is? What do you think's going on here? Should we play it one more time? Last time. Whoa! It, it does not sound. It sounds too viscous to be water. <laughs> okay, it's way too viscous. <laughs> and aw, thank you, Lauren. <laughs> it came out easily when I used all my weight, but I pulled so hard I fell backwards onto my butt. The smell was suddenly so sickening that I couldn't help but gag. When I looked down at my, at my lap, the knapsack sat between my legs, and I could feel something wet touching my leg. Ew. I reached down to grab it. Whatever it was, it was stone cold and slightly damp. Just slightly? I heard a lot more liquid than that. <laughs> what? What is that? I held my breath. The stench completely overwhelmed my senses. Slowly, I wrapped my hand around it and pulled it into view. Three, two, one. With a final surge of courage, I pulled it into view. No. I could feel all the blood instantly drain from my face. I threw it back as far as I could, but I could still see it poking out from the bushes. I scrambled away as fast as possible, trying to put some distance between myself and that thing. No. 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 Aww. See you later, um, Kuro anime. <laughs> I guess you named yourself after me, but bye. <laughs> this isn't happen. I turned away quickly, and my stomach lurched. The bag wasn't stuck in the bushes. It was stuck in someone's arms, and I just pulled one right off. I brought my hand to my chest, the feeling of, of my heartbeat on my palm, the only thing making this feel real. Ooh, he sounds like he's throwing up. <laughs> or maybe gagging? Is he gagging, actually? Okay, no, it doesn't sound like gagging. <laughs> but he could- oh, no, he is gagging! <laughs> they, say, they say it's gagging. Oof. <laughs> I gagged again, this time, much more violently than before. It was just lucky my stomach was still empty. <coughs> oh god. <laughs> you can't take just take the dick all at once. You have to go slowly, Rain. There was no way. This couldn't be happening to me. 
Just yesterday I was living a normal life, safe and happy. How did it come to this? I glanced back in the direction I threw it. It hadn't moved. An arm. A decomposing human arm. Why was it so wet then? <laughs> who, who would be out here? I can't think of anyone wanting to leave Aurelia Cavella. No one leaves. I never even heard of anyone else being expelled. Then, have others also been outcasts like I was? How long had the body been there? Another wave of nausea washed over me. I could feel the moisture on my hands. The slimy mucus left a brown sludge all over my palms. Ew, what? From the arm? From the decomposing arm? <laughs> I rubbed my hands on the ground until they were red raw, but the stains weren't going anywhere. Why won't it come off? Get off, please, get off! Yeah, I know. Because blood is wet, but he said it was decomposing, so it feels like it's been there for a while. It's not like it would still be that wet. <laughs> Get off! Oh, wait, no, why am I saying that? Most of it was gone, but I could still tell it was there. It felt disgusting. The pangs of hunter, hunger I felt only a few minutes ago were completely gone. Thank the gods I hadn't found anything to eat yet. I would have instantly lost it. I couldn't move. Or maybe you could use it as lube, right? <laughs> right, Lindsay? Don't need, don't wash it off. <laughs> there has to be a reason it's out here, so far from Aurelia Cavella, but why? What could have done this to them? I glanced back towards the bushes from behind my fringe. Hey, don't, don't, don't go OMG at me and look at me with those surprised faces and emoticons. <laughs> I said it was that's totally normal what I said. <laughs> if there was an arm, was the rest of them there too? I don't want to find out. I have to get out of here. I leapt back to my feet, spun around and sped away, giving no notice to the knapsack I left on the grass. <sighs> Ew, Wiccan. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Wiccan. That's 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 nasty. <laughs> How long have I been running? I could still feel it. When I looked down at my hands, there was nothing there, but I could still feel it. No matter where I looked, it felt like there was still like there still was no matter where I looked, I felt like it was still there, almost watching me. The sound it made when I ripped the bag from the bushes, it echoed through my mind. Wait, what's that? Is that... water? I could definitely hear a faint trickling nearby. I quickened my pace and burst out from the trees in a flurry of leaves. Water! Oh, that's pretty. I was met with a river. On either sides of the banks were littered with colorful array of trash, clothing, and various odds and ends. I don't see any trash. What is he talking about? What? I don't see any trash, but okay. I barely noticed, though. All that matters is that I could get clean and drink. <laughs> um, Niffles. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've, I've already knew this before, but his nipples are a bit wide. Um, take a look. Um, yeah, they're kind of wide. I don't know what that's about. Right? They're a little weird. They're a little weird, but he's cute. It's fine. Without any thought, I kicked off my clothes and stripped down to my underwear as I ran towards the water's edge. I launched myself from the bank directly into the river, who cares about walking around? Who cares about walking around with wet underwear later? The shallow water came up to my waist. The cool water felt refreshing against my sweaty skin. Finally, water. I kept scrubbing at my arms, hands, and legs until they were red raw. It felt like I was rubbing away the memories from earlier. Once I was satisfied with that, I moved on to my hair. The sweat and grease from la the last couple of days had really built up. <sighs> that feels better already. My head instantly whipped up towards the opposite bank. Um. <laughs> this is Kiba Walker's character, so. <laughs> 
let's all um let's all we'll just keep that in mind uh, but what is he wearing <laughs> he's wearing like these those are kind of short aren't they and like hmm, it's a very really really interesting costume design <laughs> Oh my god, are they just fucking each other's eyes? <laughs> they're, they're not saying anything, they're just staring at each other. Th they don't need words for this. <laughs> on the opposite bank stood a young, blue-haired boy with a completely dumbfounded look on his face. His arms were full of a multitude of items. Before I could open my mouth, he turned and ran. Wait! I bolted back from my clothes and took off in the same direction I last saw the boy. As I ran, I could still hear the distinct sounds of leaves and sticks crunching in front of me. At least he hasn't gotten away yet. The grounds here look like it's been used all the time. It formed what could almost be called a path. He must come this way a lot. Between the trees, I caught a brief glimpse of his blue locks. Soon, more of his figure came into view as I gained, as I gained on him. Hey, wait, please! Oh my god, Lindsay. <laughs> Always talking about feet. <laughs> he obviously wasn't going to wait. He was close enough now that I could almost touch him. I reached out to grab him, but only managed to brush my fingertips against his back. This might be my only chance. I can't risk him getting away. With the last of my energy, I leapt towards him. Got you! Oh yeah. Get get right up on him. <laughs> right in your underwear. Get right up on him. Hump him a little. Huh? Ooh. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, so yeah. This this looks like I can this is only gonna look even better once it's finished. <laughs> but um this is looking pretty cute. Rain looks pretty dominant when you put him next to um Next to this even femmer boy. I said wait! I tackled the boy to the ground and held him there with my arms with held him there with my arms either side of his head. My lungs burnt from the chase. The boy below me looked terrified. His body was shaking underneath mine. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to talk. He suddenly turned bright red. He wasn't looking at my face, though. What, what was he looking at? <laughs> when I followed his gaze, he was looking somewhere lower. Then I realized I hadn't gotten dressed yet. <laughs> Ooh, this little, this little, this little twink is a, this little twink is a little slut. I, uh, I didn't, I mean. Um. I could finally see the boy up close. His pale blue hair was feathered around him, and his silvery eyes were wide and scared. When his lips trembled, he looked like he he would cry at any moment. He seemed fragile, breakable. His face was slowly getting wetter the longer I I leant I leant my soggy hair over him. Uh, I'm so so. Uh, are are you hungry? Hungry for some hole. Uh, yeah. I quickly got off him and picked my clothes back up, cradling them to my chest. I'm going to put my clothes back on, so don't go anywhere, please. The other boy got up slowly, keeping his eyes on the ground and nodding his head slightly. I turned around and slid my clothes back on as fast as I could. I fumbled a little while, trying, tying my shoes back up. I half expected the blue-haired boy to be gone when I turned back around, but he wasn't. I'm done now. Listen, I'm sorry for jumping on you like that. I'm not trying to hurt you, but you're the only person I've seen alive out here. Uh, my name's Rain. I reached my hand out towards him, but he looked down at my open palm and hesitated, but eventually took my hand and shook it. Uh, uh, Fawn. Fawn? Uh, my name? Oh, Fawn. It's nice to meet you. I noticed the items he was carrying were littered across the grounds. Help him pick them up? 
Wait for him to finish collecting his things? Um... Hmm... <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter, it's the demo, but... <laughs> what do you guys think? Should we help him? Or should we just let the bitch pick up his own shit? <laughs> yeah, this is Kiba Walker's VA. Help him? Ugh, god. You just want to help every twink you see, don't you, Crispina? Oh my god, Lindsay, of course you want to help him. Oh my god, every one of you wants to help him. Do you guys... <sighs> Like, self-reliance, guys. Like, let the bitch do his own work. But fine, we'll help him. Because you all... You're probably all twinks, and that's why you're saying this. Because <laughs> you just want someone else to help you when you're a twink. You know, fine, we'll help him. Instantly, I instantly bent down to help him pick up his things. There were clothes in a rainbow of colors, strange ornaments, glasses without lenses, and an array of random junk. When I handed them back to him, he smiled at me with his tinted red face. Oh, thank you. Just don't expect me to pick your shit up again, asshole. So, what are all of these things? These? They're for my personal collection. Oh, Caius, are you actually a twink? <laughs> Um, <laughs> his eyes suddenly lit up. Do you want to see? Oh, I uh, mean, I have food and water back in my house that I could share with you. Really? Are you sure? My hunger and thirst from earlier had returned with a vengeance. I'm starving. Yeah, there's enough for both of us. With his arms full of items to add to his collection, he turned around and started walking. I guess he wanted me to follow after him? I jogged up to walk beside him. So, Fawn, you live here in the forest? By yourself? Oh, yeah, not far from here. Not by myself, though. I live with a bunch of my friends. Really? You all live out here together? For how long? Uh... He stopped for a couple of seconds before speaking. Again, he, he seemed pretty deep in thought. A while now. Helpful. Why did you leave Aurelia <laughs> Cavella when the divine beings don't protect the outside land? <laughs> he sounds pretty annoyed, just like he's annoyed at those kids back at the orphanage. <laughs> what? The speaker says it's too dangerous to even enter the forest, let alone live here. How did you get here? A speaker? Aurelia Covella? Are you talking about the town to the west of here? Across the river. Fawn frowned at me, obviously confused by what I was saying. You don't know the speaker? I've never been there before, so... Wait. So you were born out here? No, I came here as a child. What's up with this guy? Maybe he's delusional from being out here for so long. Uh, alright. Sure. I just let it go. It was obvious Fawn didn't know exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> Before I could ask anything else, we stopped in front of a tall tree with a rope ladder hanging down from it. When I looked up, I could see a small wooden hut set into the trunk. Into the trunk. You live in a tree? It's safer to be up high during the night. He gave me a soft smile when he loaded a bag full of his new items and slung it across his back. I couldn't help but think about the knapsack from earlier. Best, best just try to, best just to try and forget about it. Fawn started climbing up the ladder with ease and waved at me from the top. I guess it's my turn. I grabbed onto the ladder and climbed up after him. Wow. When I came up the ladder and into Fawn's treehouse, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It consisted of only one room, with a makeshift bed, a couple of chairs, and a few other random bits of furniture. That's not what impressed me, though. 